Unpopular opinion alert. My editor's least favorite character is this one for this reason. And all I have to say to that is Andre, you are a terrible, terrible person. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and yes, I'd say that about 95% of the shirts that I own are indeed black. And today we are here to continue our sometimes ongoing quest to discover the most unpopular takes in the One Piece fandom. For example, here's an unpopular opinion that I've recently discovered I hold, which is that I do not care one bit about Hyasso. Because really, what has he done? We are almost 25 years into this story and his biggest claim to fame is abandoning his wife and child to pursue an alluring redhead. Furthermore, he did nothing during chapter one, nothing during Marineford, and at this point, even Rockstar has done more to earn my appreciation. And all he did was crap his pants in front of Whitebeard, but you know what, that's uh, still something. Yeah, your move, Yasop. Anyway, that's an example of what we're looking for here today. Although as always, these opinions will not be coming from myself. I'm not so interested in my opinions because I already know and probably agree with them. So the floor is now open to all of you wonderful members of the Grand Fleet to express your potentially concerning One Piece based opinions. An endeavor that we are going to begin with a quick round of hot take or hot cake, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Straw Hat Chef Sanji is going to offer you something and it is going to be your job to guess whether that something is a freshly crafted pancake or a highly controversial hot take. Now, should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, also resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then you will receive an all expenses paid by you dining experience to Baratier. So what will it be, hot take or hot cake? Make your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam. It is a hot take with Sanji yelling all sorts of Zoro related slander. Ugh. So if you guess cake, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. Speaking of the Zoro though, he is involved in our first unpopular opinion, which is, I hate that Luffy doesn't know about the nothing happened moment. And I guess I should also add that it's not just Luffy. Most of the Straw Hats have no idea what Zoro did on Thriller Bark with the exception of Sanji who found out via the Risky Brothers and Robin who grew an ear and then eavesdropped on the conversation because Robin can do really weird stuff like that. But as for Luffy not knowing, I think Sanji himself sums up this best by understanding that Zoro didn't take this action to make Luffy feel grateful, worried, indebted, or any other thesaurus-y sort of words. Synonym was the, the word I was rather ironically looking for there. And that's why assumedly both Sanji and Robin are playing along with the whole, oh yeah, well, I have no idea what happened either sort of game. And in the end, let's remember that this moment is called nothing thing happened and if Luffy were to find out that perhaps something did indeed happen, then it kind of defeats the spirit of nothing happening. And we may as well change Zoro's dialogue to something happened. Kizaru is the strongest admiral. He just doesn't care to put in the effort to show it. And, uh, I honestly don't know how to feel about this one. Whenever I think about the admirals, Kizaru does get neglected in my mind thing because of exactly what this commenter is saying. He's very aloof and we have yet to see what really, you know, makes him tick. Right now, he's very much like the guy at work who, to be fair, does his job perfectly well. But it's pretty obvious that their true passions lie elsewhere, which we can see in Kizaru's permanent blank stare off into the distance. And just what is he looking at? Could it be justice? Is it a banana? Is it justice in a towel holding a banana? All very good guesses, but sadly, we will never know. But whatever it is, it's distracting, very distracting, and prevents Kizaru from really having that critical mass of Sakazuki style drive. And we actually have more than one Kizaru opinion this time around, with our next one being, observation Haki won't work on Kizaru. I mean, if they can react to the speed of light, they literally are on par with DBZ, which is impossible. And I would agree with you, but here's the thing. Just because Kizaru may or may not be able to travel at the speed of light does not mean that he can actually react at the same speed. If someone goes to attack Kizaru, he's still going to have to go through the same comparatively slow process of human thinking before deciding to use his speed for well, whatever purpose. Think of it this way, his actions can be performed at the vaguely defined one piece world speed of light, but his nervous system is still going to function much like anyone else's. Maybe even worse, because for a man who can move at light speed, he has probably the slowest functioning brain of any character in the series. Whitebeard's death was sadder than Ace's. And well, I actually agree, but then again, I'm very much being on the record as not having been you know, thoroughly devastated by the loss of Ace, which I suppose is probably an unpopular 
popular opinion in and of itself. But to me, it was more about the shock of like an actual death happening in One Piece, as well as feeling for the pain that Luffy was in. Whereas when Whitebeard came along, that was more like a shot of truly refined tragedy. You know, you see his flashbacks where he talks about dreams of having a family, his final words are about the One Piece. He has this legendary legacy of dying on his feet and you can really feel the devastation within the Whitebeard pirates ever so much more than, and I'm sorry to say this, but much more than when Ace died. Oda has no clue how to use Charlotte's smoothies fruit, so he keeps getting rid of her in the story to delay and come up with something. Yeah, I just think that Oda has no clue how to use smoothie. A fruit is actually terrifyingly versatile and Oda is crazy creative with stuff like that. It's just that the fruit ended up with a bit of an unfortunate character. I mean, I'm still personally holding on to hope that Smoothie might have something, maybe anything to do in Wano. But then again, she's also ever so far down the list of priority characters that I have made peace with the idea that she may just disappear and remain unexplored. Which yes, is a shame because Cracker and Katakuri, they got their moments and all of Kaido's officer dude guys have also had some decent action. So Smoothie might just end up being the forgotten commander. It pisses me off that I don't know why Kinemon's hair went from blonde to black. A fair question, but what I'm more curious about is which one of them is Kinemon's natural hair color. Like, was he born blonde and dyed his hair black to be more respectful and uh, samurai-like? Or did he dye his hair blonde to really amp up his naked street punk vibe? Was this like Kinemon's edgy rebellious phase or something? I didn't know Kinemon was 26, that's crazy. I always thought he was in his 30s for some reason. Uh, so the reason why you thought that is because Kinemon is actually in his 30s. So don't doubt yourself, you were correct all along. According to the One Piece Vivian Cantata book, Kinemon is 36 to be precise. However, he was shown at the age of 26 at one point in the Odin flashback. So maybe that's where the confusion stems from. By the way, while we're here, can we just talk about unrealistic body standards? At the beginning of the Odin flashback, Kinemon is, is like this many years old, 15 that was, and he is stacked for a 15 year old, holy crap. Then again, Wano people are just naturally bigger than regular human things, but also to add on to that, so is everyone. Regular humans are more like the equivalent of hobbits in this series. The Funimation dub is just as good as the original Japanese as a whole. Some scenes are better in English, some are better in Japanese, but both are good because both are made with love. Aw, what a truly adorable, however very certified unpopular opinion. I mean, it's obviously almost entirely subjective, but I personally have a lot of difficulty trying to watch the English dub. It just feels quite cringe to hear Luffy and well, everyone else speaking English when the Japanese voices and vocal mannerisms are so ingrained into my mind. With that said, what I will grant is that to native Japanese speakers, I don't actually know how different the two would be. With my pathetic Japanese listening to the language still feels like a foreign and magical experience. Whereas when I'm listening to good old English, I can nitpick the language because I actually understand it. Things like why did you choose to put the emphasis there on that word or elongate that one and all the, the stuff that just goes completely over my head when listening to it in magical weeby Japanesey. Although the ultimate argument is that the animation is intended for the Japanese language, you know, the lip flaps and stuff are made with the idea that Japanese will be spoken. And at all times, you very much have to awkwardly cram English into there. But still, I'd be curious to know how many of you like the English dub, so do make yourselves known. If Pedro didn't have such a short amount of time to live, he would have joined the Straw Hats. Ah, uh, why did you have to remind me about Pedro? I was having such a good day before this. <sighs> In any case, I, I don't know about this. This question will probably become much clearer once we have a confirmed answer to the whole Carrot joining the crew idea, because if Carrot doesn't join, then I don't see any scenario where a surviving Pedro would have. However, if Carrot were were to join, then that would be directly picking up Pedro's will, meaning that Pedro, in another universe where he did live, well, he may have stood a decent chance. Either way, here's a more fun question. Who would you rather have joined the Straw Hats, Carrot or Pedro? This might be very unpopular considering the global character poll results, but I'm actually gonna say Pedro. I really loved his paranoid violence first minky quirks, and I think he would have fit in quite well. Elbaf has been talked up for so long that at this point, there's no way it can live up to expectations when the crew finally gets there. Yeah. Yeah, like honestly, I'm starting to get that feeling as well. Because here's the thing about Elbaf. This eventual arc can go in one of two directions. Either Elbaf becomes a short stop to bridge something bigger, sort of like how Zoe acted to Whole Cake Island, thus disappointing people because it was a short stop and not this like big epic adventure. Or alternatively, it could become its own substantial big epic adventure. And in which case it would risk potentially ending up like Fishman Island. And I bring up that direct comparison because Fishman Island is probably one of the biggest victims of 
of One Piece hype, if not the biggest so far. The island was mentioned in East Blue and the Straw Hats were always actively gunning for it in some way that they don't usually do for other islands. So once we finally got there, yes, it was beautiful and amazing, but it was never going to live up to the hype and expectations that we had built up over like a decade for it. And that's before we consider factors like Hody and uh, well, with more Hody. So Albaf could end up in a similar situation and I actually hope it ends up being a shorter experience. Smoker being left in the dirt in terms of power was a really bad decision by Oda and has ruined any chance of a satisfying climax to his and Luffy's rival. And the question I have in response to this is were they ever really rivals to begin with? And the answer to that is maybe. Smoker did set out to pursue Luffy in the same sort of way that Garp was said to chase Roger. But at the same time, Smoker has never really shown the sort of dedication we're looking for on that front. I mean, during Alabaster, he just, he just disappeared for the whole climax. And whilst he did indeed talk big about meeting Luffy in the new world, well, we all know how that turned out, don't we? It's an interesting question though, because there are times when Smoker feels a bit half-baked, and not like baked in a smoking-related sense, which would be a clever pun, but more like a bread-baking metaphor. However, if you wanted to be super wanky about this, and <laughs> I think we do, then you could also argue that that's the entire point of his character. He isn't the GARP-driven pirate capture machine, he's a human caught in the machine, questioning said machine's function. So he initially sets out to complete his technical purpose, but always ends up thinking and acting autonomously. Which is why I don't think I've ever seen Smoker as a rival to Luffy, he seems far more like some sort of reluctant ally. Oda doesn't want the story to end because he has spent over 20 years already and it makes him rich. I think there probably comes a point where money stops being a driving factor for creative endeavors in people like Oda. And I'd say that point is probably well below where Oda actually is, given that he is undisputedly the most wealthy mangaka in human history, with an estimated net worth of 200 million US dollars. So maybe I'm just incredibly naive because I'm not wealthy, but surely, surely at that point, money is not the driving factor to continue to work yourself to death. Zoro can actually hear the voice of all things more than anyone, and they tell him which direction to go. So I think you, dear commenter, may have confused unpopular opinions with crazy theories, but yeah, sure, why not? It's a fun idea, and I guess it also touches on the concept that Zoro's internal compass will be the key to ultimately discovering Laugh Tail. Another crazy theory. But at the same time, it seems like the sort of stupid thing that Oda would do. You know, we get the precise location from the road poneglyphs, but even that is not enough. And then all of a sudden, Zoro accidentally discovers the One Piece. Yeah, yeah it works. Shiki could solo anyone alive right now. Nope. And if you'd like to examine some more unpopular opinions, then do check out this playlist of wonderfully controversial takes from our very own Grand Fleet. Lots of fun to be had, so I look forward to seeing you there.